Hello folks, uh, Tornado Twins here with another exciting prefab and this is the long awaited side scroller prefab. Now as you can see this is still a little bit 3D but if you look from the side it becomes a platformer. Now platformers or side scrollers or 2.5D games or two dimensional games are still extremely popular. It started all the way back in the time of Prince of Persia which still has games and movies coming out. But even more recently, if you look at, for example, Zombieville USA for the iPhone is one of the top grossing apps on the App Store ever made with Unity 3D. Now, this will help you get your side scroller going pretty fast. And the level design gets pretty easy, actually, because you can make everything in the direction of the X axis as well as the Y. Because Z is depth and you don't need much depth if a game is two dimensional. Now... Let me run the game here and as you can see we have a little cylinder which is uh, replaceable with your character and you can move left and right and the camera will smoothly follow it. Let me make a screen a little bigger here. Now I can jump of course and I could uh, go on platforms that sort of thing as you would normally expect from any platformer and I can tweak variables the way I want it. Now if you're making a strictly two dimensional game with animations you can attach your 2D sprites on this cylinder and you're done. That's basically all you need to do and then trigger the animations. If you want a 2.5D game, which means the character is still 3D, everything is still kind of 3D, like for example Mirror's Edge for the iPad, then you can simply replace this cylinder with your 3D character and animations. Now let me show you what we can tweak here. Let's go for example to the main camera first. And the main camera has a couple of uh, uh, things that we can tweak on the script. For example, we can change the camera distance. Now you can do this at runtime as well as before the game starts. So if you want to get really close, you can do a distance of, for example, five, and this brings the immersion up a little bit during a cutscene or whatever. And for example, if you want to zoom out all of a sudden to make the character feel lonely or distant or far away or all by himself in the desert, then you can tweak a camera distance of 30. Of course, you can also bounce the camera distance back and forth when your character dies and the animation of him popping off the screen, that sort of thing. Or when he dies, you can bring the camera really close and make him actually fall towards the camera. All these kind of things you can do with just one variable right here. Then, of course, there's damping also. And damping is basically uh, the damping of the camera, how fast it will follow you. You know, so it's the lag kind of. Okay, then I have a maximum camera speed if you don't want the camera to go too fast. And then you can also limit the camera speed by checking this box. Right next, let's take a look at the player, what we can do with this one. If we can select the player, there's a whole bunch of variables that we can tweak. For example, the ground speed, which is the speed that he moves over the ground. That kind of makes sense. So now it's 40. And as you can see, he will move a lot faster. So if your game is pretty hyper, then 40 would be for you. You can also change the in-air speed when he's in the air. So if we could change that, for example, 20, then now the airspeed is also somewhat longer. It makes him, uh, makes him go faster when he jumps. Now jump speed is actually the up force that we use. So if we tweak that to, for example, a ridiculous number of 800 and then jump, you can see that he pops all the way up, kind of Mario style, you know. So really fun effects that you can do with that. The camera will kind of follow him still. And you can change the maximum speed. You can limit his speed. You can also uh, change the on-ground drag or friction and then the in-ground or in-air drag or friction. Now, of course, there is a, um, a sub here of the hierarchy of the player, and that's the graphics. And this is basically what you want to replace your character with. The graphics do not have a collision on them. That's the actual player. That's why the graphics are grouped underneath the player as a member of it. So simply replace this with your character as long as collision is being applied to this empty cylinder here. For example, if I turn the graphics off, you can see the collision cylinder is still there when we walk around. So that's how easy you can replace your character um, and still keep the same collision information and the controls and camera as, they, as we have set them up for you. All right, so that's about it for the uh, two-dimensional side-scroller. This will uh, prove for some great gameplay. If you buy this one on unityprefabs.com and make a game out of it, make sure you send us some screenshots so that we can feature them on our pages and also link back to you. All right, so uh, that's one of the exciting uh, things this week. And, of course, we have more prefabs coming each week.
and I'll talk to you later. Bye.